just going to go in a little bit at a time until I get it right. Hi, y'all. Welcome to my shop. Um, the live center that that came with uh, with my uh, 2014 is a little different, a little little cheaper. Uh, probably the same quality, but they had to remove some some monetary content to keep it at a reasonable price point. So uh, I'll show you a close up of these. So the one that came with the, the big Powermatic, and it also comes with the big jets, and also uh, something similar. This comes with a robust, very nice threaded three quarter by ten. It has a sixty degree cone, which I never use because soft aluminum. Um, but a sixty degree cone is not optimum for a lot of a lot of turning projects. And sometimes I have a need to just bring up some support, but I don't want to uh, put a little divot in it. And the easiest way for me then is to make something similar to this that I made for the Laguna, and that's something that will fit in here and have a projection that's flat, just to support the bottom of the bowl when I'm. Uh, finishing off the back side, for example. Uh, so I've, I've measured and determined that the optimum size is right at two and a quarter, two and a quarter inches long and about one and five eighths inch thick. And I found a piece of uh, Bradford pear that already had a uh, tenon on it. So I've already started rounding it off and marked, marked the length. So now we're going to drill a hole. I measured the hole uh, needed to just fit over fit over this to be about um, just under two inches and I'm going to use, you could do this with a smaller drill bit and a drill chuck but because I have a, a this one inch Morse taper that's the one I'm going to use so I set my tail stock or the quill at one inch and then all I've got to do is, is drill till I reach uh, almost reach the two inch part. Uh, I drill at less than 500 on this big drill bit. This is using the lowest torque setting uh, with the speed from 60 to 3600. Let's hope that doesn't balk and that, that I don't have to take the time to change the belt. But we're going to slow it down to a little under 500. Lock the tool rest down. And we're just going to drill until we almost get to the 3 inch mark. Very fine, fairly dry wood. And I'm looking at the marks on the side. One, two, three, four, five, six. One more. That gets me where I want to be. And this motor had no problem with the torque required on this this drill bit, so that that's good. And. I didn't even bother to, to lock the casters because this thing is so so heavy. Now I measured the size hole this is going to take, and it it's uh, a little bit it, a little bit more than one and a quarter inches, and less than one and a half. So with this one inch hole, I've got to uh, hollow it out just a little bit more to make it make it fit. So we're just going to do that a little bit at a time, starting with the outside edge, and judge where we are. You want to set the tool rest at or slightly below center, or the, the, for the cutting edge of the tool, at or slightly below uh, center. I'm going to use a uh, box, box scraper with this side that's, that's sharpened. And I've got the speed up to oh, somewhere around 1500, not, not critical. Holding it flat, I'm just going to come in. And I'm just going to go in a little bit at a time until I get it right. Checking, checking it. Let's see my gauge how close. Oh, I don't know. I might be sixteenth of an inch more. Of course, sixteenth on this side and the sixteenth on that side makes it an eighth of an inch. So. Once I get it right, I can carry it all the way down. Okay, so that's that's pretty much on the money. I want a, uh, a piston fit, that is not a sloppy fit, but I don't want to have to really manhandle the thing on and off. So, here we go. Just do it a little bit at a time.
It's been my experience when you use a box scraper to go down inside, it's going to tend to cut less and less as it's a little harder. So what might be a little loose on the outside will start getting snug and, and jamming in, which is exactly right, which is after it only goes in there a little ways. So I just need to pick up the cut, maybe a quarter of an inch, three-eighths of an inch down. And that gives a very nice, nice snug fit. A little deeper than I expected. That's okay. I just need to mark that 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 depth. So you know how much I've got to play with on the other end, which is not a lot. But because I drilled it with a uh, twist a uh, bit, I know I can bring in the taper here a little bit without any problem so I can get the clearance that I'm, I'm looking for. And actually, I can probably come out to come out a little bit a little bit further. So I'm going to start my taper at oh about a half an inch from the end. Bring it down a little bit and then make it look similar to that. I'm going to do that using a 3 8 inch spindle gauge. Yeah, I'll You can always buy tools, but I find it very satisfying for you to be able to make your own tools, especially for ones that aren't real critical and ones maybe you don't use as often. They don't have to be per perfect, they just need to be able to get the job done. I'm going to go ahead and use a beating and parting tool to take that end down. And it looks like just about the width of the parting tool and maybe a little bit more. actual part. And I think that's about the size I want. So I now just have to continue that shape around. Just need to have a little clearance back here. And I think that's just about got it. The wall thickness is a little thicker than I need, so I'm going to go ahead and take a planing cut and take it back a little bit, get rid of that little bit of bandsaw mark I've got on the side. It's chattering a little bit because there's not a lot of support, so I'll go a little bit slower. And just chamfer the edge there just because I can. And we're going to come back in this direction. And this doesn't need to be sanded or anything. It, it, uh, I'm not worried about the appearance. Now I do want to uh, cut it off flat. Um, I want to think about is there anything I need to do special on that end? I don't think so. I don't need to rechuck this. I think I can just part it off and sand it, sand it flat and it'll accomplish what I want. So I'm going to get a thin parting tool. All right, so we're just going to part it off. I like to part off and go faster than about 1,200, 1,100, some, somewhere in there, not really critical. Give a little bit of binding. Let's come back and add a little more room. with it, but for such a shallow cut, but apparently I can't. Okay. And there we've got our, our current tool. I'll, I'll just uh, sand that against a flat piece of sandpaper, and it'll be, be ready. Alright, so in operation, let's say uh, we're going to take our 
a, a live center, pop it in. We're going to put this little cover soft touch over it. And let's say we might want to be reversing a bowl. This is a rough turn, obviously, but uh, you just want to bring up some support like that and still get into the bottom. You know, then you've got it, and you don't have to worry about it if your tool hits it uh, because you can always make another one. But it works great for flat things. Maybe, maybe you're putting in a flat piece of wood that you're cutting around or something. You just need a little extra support, but you don't want a hole in it. There you go. Drill a series of, of holes uh, in some little, uh, in a thin piece of plywood, or it could be MDF, but drill different size holes and then cut these out. How big the holes are going to be, you're going to have to experiment with because it's going to depend on how thick the, uh, these, the plywood you might be using. So you can make some with a larger hole so it will just barely stick out and still keep the wood from, from slipping. Or you can make them with uh, smaller holes as a safe center and it won't protrude.